All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk about some work that we're currently doing. Um, PwC and, and the AERU at Lincoln University are working together to look at the value of exports um, in this high-value nutrition space. And this work was set up really nicely by Bob Major because he showed you that graph at the beginning with kind of where we are now and what the big, hairy goal is in the future. And to their credit, when they set this up, they said, well, we have a goal. Why don't we try to measure it or measure progress uh, towards it? You know, too often we kind of set these goals and then they kind of get parked and we don't talk about whether we achieve them or not. So our job is to um, see how well you're doing. So that's what I'm going to present here. I just want to start with the key points um, so that you can get them now and you can kind of carry them through the rest of the uh, presentation. The first thing is that currently these HVN or functional foods are a very small share of New Zealand exports. So we're starting from a really low base, but that means that it's only up from here. Uh, the second thing is that they're very concentrated in a few products, in a few industries, in a few lines. So this isn't um, HVN and functional foods. They're not kind of widespread across the, the food and ag um, sector. They're quite concentrated. Um, <clears throat> the third thing is that um, health claims are kind of part of a constellation of claims. And one of the key things in that constellation is food trust. So consumers have to trust the food and the integrity and the hygiene and everything else. And it's only once you, you're over that hurdle that you can then go on to make a health claim. And then the final thing, and, and I think everybody sort of reflected this um, already today, it's a dynamic market. Um, and uh, things are changing all the time, and um, we need to be getting more information out there, and as well, um, we need to be reacting to it. So those are the key points, and hopefully you'll see them reflected through the rest of this. Just a, a brief introduction now to, um, to us and to the projects. So. Um, I am not Professor Caroline Saunders. Uh, Caroline is sitting and she'll join us later and, and finish this for us. She's at Lincoln University and she's director of the AERU and she's got a lot of experience in agribusiness, economics, trade and the environment. And she runs a team down there. And um, I'm a director in finance and economics at PwC and I run our economics group in Wellington. And I do a lot of work in food and agriculture and as well in consumer research. Um, so we're backed up by teams at our respective places. And what we're trying to do with this work, it's two things. One is we're trying to estimate the revenue that New Zealand gets from um, high value nutrition exports. So we're trying to actually come up with a dollar value. Um, and again, I think somebody mentioned hiding, hiding from things earlier. Um, we're trying to make sure you can't hide from it. We're gonna give you a number. You may not like it, we may not have gotten it quite right, but at least we'll put it out there. The second part of the work is about um, understanding New Zealand's reputation overseas um, around these kind of high quality foods, especially around the validated health claims. Um, so what we're trying to do is, is find out how overseas consumers think about New Zealand. Um, that's a little bit harder, but um, that's, that's um, uh, another part of the project and Caroline will tell us about that later. So the the hard part about getting this project started is that the number that we give you, the overall value that we estimate, depends very much on what you're looking at. Um, and we're, at the moment, we're kind of working with a, a triangle or a pyramid diagram, although that might change o over time. But at the very top is the, the proven, scientifically validated health claims. And this is the, the pinnacle of what HVN is about, about doing the science to validate the claims and then, and then encouraging consumers to buy the product based on those claims. Um, <clears throat> there's not very much out of New Zealand in this space at the moment. Um, now we've estimated the 2014 baseline values as uh, uh, five or six hundred million dollars, and I'll tell you a bit about that later, five or six hundred million dollars of exports out of New Zealand. Um, but it's it's in a very concentrated area. So this isn't kind of lots and lots of products. It's very concentrated. Um, <clears throat> but if you move down one level in that, in that pyramid, you get to the, the specific claims that aren't about this particular food product. Maybe the science isn't quite linked up quite as much, but you can still make a health claim. And once you get to that level, um, and you're talking about kind of vitamin C and beta-glucans and so on, you're looking at um, $10 billion of exports from New Zealand. So you can see it's really quite a jump from the top to that next, uh, next level. 
And then below that is, is kind of the general, hey, this stuff's good for you, kind of milk has calcium, so you should drink more of it. Um, and that's obviously, we sell a lot of food products, we sell food because it's healthy, and that bottom uh, layer um, represents probably 12 billion or so of our, of our um, exports. Now obviously that doesn't make up all of our food exports, we sell more food than that, but um, these are the, this is the, the extent to which the food that we sell is based on health claims. Now, <clears throat> how have we gotten to this? Well, we got to this by looking at the export statistics that are available. Um, but there's a big problem with that. Statistics New Zealand doesn't actually collect data in this way. So there's no data source we can go to and we can open up a table and we can point to a number and say, that's what you're doing. So that's where we've come in. Now, Statistics New Zealand does tell us a lot about export information, and there's a whole categorization uh, 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 catalog that happens that are called HS codes. And our teams have gone through all of the HS codes, and we're using the six-digit level, and we found kind of 600 um, uh, codes that, that are kind of important. And we've gone through all of them, and we've categorized them, and we've thought about, well, where could these functional foods be hiding in all of this data? Um, and and then from that, we, the second stage of the project was to take these big numbers that we th where we think the functional food is hiding and actually kind of pull those values out of that, out of that data. And how do we pull that data, out, the, those numbers out? So what we did is we went to the experts, to you folks. We did a survey of people in the food and beverage sector to try to understand um, uh, you're exporting milk powder. Well, how much of that is based on some kind of health claim? Or you're exporting kiwi fruit. How much of that is based on what you can tell people about the healthiness of kiwi fruit? So we interviewed a bunch of people from uh, across the sector and got a sense from them of what portion of exports is based on health claims. Um, <clears throat> now, some people reported that um, they were, they were selling exports based on the idea that their food was especially nutritious um, and they could make some kind of claim about something in the product. Um, a lot of people actually reported they weren't selling functional foods at all, that kind of nutrition was sort of part of their business, but they weren't actually selling based on, on uh, nutritive value. Um, and really, when we, when we kind of nail people down, if we're thinking about that, that tiny top of the pyramid, we actually only found one uh, firm of any size that was uh, exporting based on a scientifically validated health claim for their product. So at the moment, it's still a very small market. It's still early days. We've got a, a lot of work to do. Just to give you an idea of, of um, kind of some of these some of these products and how they change over time, I mentioned it's a dynamic market. And um, I, this is just four products that we've chosen out of all of these HS codes that are kind of moving around a bit. And um, these are for honey, mussels, cranberries, and avocado. And all of these are products where people are saying, mm, there's a health benefit here, we might be able to validate something. And that, that big um, shooting up one is, um, that's the honey line. So you can see honey exports are really taking off um, around a lot of this interest in, in Manuka honey. Um, there are technical issues with the health claim, but you can still see that you can, you can build a business on, on uh, the idea that it's uh, got, a, got good nutrition uh, associated with it. The ones that jump around are mussels and avocado, and in those you can see actually some of the difficulties with these, with these products. Um, I've actually been doing work with the avocado industry just, just recently, and one of their struggles is getting consistency of supply. And if you're trying to kind of sell people on the value of your product, and then you have a bad year and suddenly you don't have the product to sell them, then all of that work has gone to waste. Um, <clears throat> the next thing that we're doing, um, in addition to this kind of statistical work, is we're actually um, linking up with uh, the PwC office in Singapore to do research on what's going on in Asia. We're actually having them do uh, work in market. What we're trying to do is, um, we kind of sit here in, in New Zealand and we think we know what we're saying to the world, and we're asking these folks actually to tell us, is that message getting through, or what's actually happening? So they've gone into grocery stores, they've looked at magazines, um, they're, they're sort of pulling together some evidence of how New Zealand is perceived and how these exports are perceived. 
um, and this includes qualitative work, uh, quantitative work, interviews with uh, people in government and importers, and so on. So they're trying to bring all of that information, and what we're trying to do is marry up these kind of three bits of information, the hard numbers from statistics, the interviews with industry, and then this, this overseas work that validates it. And one of the main things I just want to point out here is that the message that's coming through again and again is food safety, hygiene, um, uh, trust. So that food trust is a really important component of all of this. So now I'm going to turn it over to Caroline and she'll tell us about the, the other part of the work. Hi, good afternoon. Seven minutes and counting down, I like it. <laughs> um, thanks Bill for, for that. And. Um, as Bill said, that um, PwC have been going in market research, and here's a bit where the science challenges sort of meet, because um, I'm theme leader of um, the Island and Water Value Chain theme, and we've done work with other projects looking at um, in-market research, and as Bill says, that confirms the results that um, we've been talking about. So we've got a shift in perceptions in the Asian market towards healthier food, as they get wealthier, we get the rise of the middle class in these countries. Um, High-end imported food is definitely trending upwards. Um, we are getting evidence that this links with the traditional medicines, and you saw that with the earlier presentation that was given about the, the blank in the area of the patents of that, um, about looking at how we could connect into to those. And diets are, are changing, and I've just come back from China, and interesting, the Chinese are being told, maybe that's the wrong word, to eat less meat, but definitely milk consumption is much lower than the government's target for milk consumption. Um, some of our research from, from overseas markets, part of a much bigger um, project called Maximising Export Returns, and this is a subset of the health enhancing one, and it's just showing you across five key markets that New Zealand might be interested in, the relative importance of what we call health enhancing foods. And you can see there a big stress on the developing countries, particularly cared, um, compared to the developed countries, Japan and the UK. And if we dig down to those, what they mean more, um, more here again is another scratch on the information we got from that work. Um, bone health screams out from all of them. It's a bit hard to tell on the colouring here, but you find UK and Japan uh, find all these attributes less important. They're more important for the developing countries, and you can see differences there. Indonesia stressing digestive health, the immune system, um, whereas less on, on the skin health. So there's, there's been a lot of research there that we can build on. But the particular bit of this research is, as Bill introduced, what we're looking at is tracking how successful is the science challenge. And as I say, really um, welcome the fact that, with, that the science challengers had the courage to start measuring that at the start. And what we're doing at the moment is a baseline survey, um, which has been drafted, it's going to ethics at the moment, of a survey of uh, 1,200 consumers across three key markets. Those were the markets that were pre-decided, but we might change the US to Japan, still under discussion there, to look and see what are their um, attitudes towards valid, scientifically validated health claims in their products? What do they find important or not important? And what are they willing to pay for? And um, as well, have they heard of New Zealand and how's New Zealand's reputation? And the aim is to repeat this survey over the, over the challenge period to see how the challenge is contributing to consumers in market. The second part of this research is a semi-structured interview um, of 30 key informants. And so we're putting together a, a list of people at the moment. Vicky, you're on it. You might not know it yet, please. <laughs> um, be delighted if you've got suggestion of people in market or in New Zealand that would really help to inform how the challenge is progressing um, to look and see what are the key issues out there, are we meeting those issues, how is New Zealand perceived, and how important are these health claims as we're going forward? So, as I said, any help on those, gratefully received. Thank you.